Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss the legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedoms and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staber, the President and General Counsel of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country in the courtrooms of America. Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedoms. Liberty Council files a federal lawsuit on behalf of Child Evangelism Fellowship in Minneapolis. I am Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council and dean of Liberty University School of Law. Joining me is Matt Barber, director of cultural affairs for Liberty Council and associate dean for the law school. Liberty Council has filed a federal lawsuit, Matt, on behalf of Child Evangelism Fellowship of Minnesota, which is the sponsor of the Good News Club, and it's against the Minneapolis Special School District Number 1. The case here is an equal access case. In this case, the school district is prohibiting the inclusion in its promotion and after-school programs of things or information relative to Child Evangelism Fellowship. CEF was previously approved an after-school program partner for five years with no incident. So they were allowed to be part of this after-school program. But in the fall of 2009, the school district notified CEF that its programming was no longer appropriate on March 25, 2010. The Assistant District General Counsel for the district sent a letter stating the reason was that CES programming, quote, included leading the children in prayer, teaching them that Jesus Christ is their Savior, and studying biblical passages, close quote. Well, that's obvious what CEF does. They do that and a lot of other things. They teach morality. They teach good behavior. They teach respect. They teach cooperation. They teach all of those things, but it is a Christian organization. That's, in fact, what the Supreme Court decision clearly acknowledged. And the Supreme Court said that they must have equal access to these school facilities. Well, Matt, I know Liberty Council on numerous occasions, dozens, I think, of of occasions, we have defended uh, Child uh, Evangelism Fellowship across the country uh, relative to these good news clubs, and we have (laughs) won time and time and time again. So clearly the school district uh, is in violation here. And uh, I, I think once again, uh, Liberty Council will have success here. Look at the, but again, this is clear view, view, viewpoint discrimination. The, the district allows uh, many after school organizations to, to partner with and, and provide services to, to children and families, the Boy Scouts, Big Brothers and Big Sisters, uh, even Catholic Charities and, and Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota, but, but they uh, get bent out of shape when, when you know, there's a chance that the students might actually uh, be exposed to the Bible or prayer or learning about Jesus Christ. Well, guess what? You know, of course, that's a good thing, but it certainly doesn't violate the law for children to be exposed to that. In fact, uh, the school district here here is in violation of the law. They really are. I mean, when they, you know, the case that went before the United States Supreme Court was a case involving Child Evangelism Fellowship and their good news clubs on public school campuses in the state of New York. The school allowed Boy Scouts, but they did not want to allow the Christian club because it's Christian. They said that they actually have almost like worship services. They sing Christian songs. They memorize scripture. They talk about Jesus Christ. So it's kind of like a worship group on campus. They also do other things, they said, such as they teach morals and they teach good behavior and character development. They then banned the club. The Supreme Court said you can't do that because that's viewpoint-based discrimination. You allow the Boy Scouts, and they teach character and patriotism, which CEF also does. They teach character development and morality, which CEF does. But they do it from a Christian perspective. So they allow the subject matter of character, morality, and patriotism. But they say you can only teach that or have that perspective if it's secular. If it's Christian, you can't be on campus. The Supreme Court said you can't make that distinction because that's viewpoint discrimination. Viewpoint discrimination is kind of like uh, a quarter. You know, the heads part of it is one view. The tails part of it is the other view. Or politics, Republicans versus Democrats. Republicans would be one kind of political party. Democrats would be another. Or abortion, pro-life versus pro-abortion. 
those perspectives are viewpoints. And so when you allow the subject matter, abortion, you can't simply say we're only going to allow pro-abortion. If you're going to allow political parties in politics, you can't just simply say we're only going to allow Democrats. You can't just simply license one side of the debate and stifle the other side of the same debate from a different perspective. That's what viewpoint discrimination is. And so when that happens, it is one of the highest protected forms of speech because otherwise, if it weren't, the government could pick and choose what side of the debate to come down on and just license one and disable the other. Well, unfortunately, people like Amy Moore, uh, the assistant district general counsel for the school district, and other people, there are many that are overtly hostile to to religion and to to Christianity. There are some who just believe that they're doing the right thing uh, because this nonsensical notion of quote, separation of church and state that the ACLU has been pushing into modern lexicon for so many years, a lot of people really believe what the ACLU claims, that that any uh, exercise of religion or reference to Christianity or Christ in any public forum is strictly prohibited by the United States Constitution. Of course, that's just a complete poppycock. That's ridiculous. But that is the template. That's the narrative that the ACLU has been pushing for so many years. And so unfortunately, uh, from a bad narrative, from unfortunately, the ACLU's misdirection uh, and misrepresentation of what the Constitution actually says, it has really taken root in our in our popular culture today. And many people listen to the ACLU, rather than taking the time to actually see what the Constitution says and to see what the Supreme Court has ruled on these very important issues. 